Welcome to the third part of this video, where I'll be talking about the animation part of creating this scene and everything that went into making it not just a solid image. The animation of this scene was probably one of the easiest parts, something I could do quite early on and I had all the base I needed to build off of it to create the animation. It was quite easy to do. The hardest part was probably making the light flicker, which is something I took me a while to get used to. But now I know it, I could do it quite easily and could definitely do it and have done it again. So let's start off with just the camera movements. I'll go into solid view for this just as it runs a bit faster. So as you can see, if I click space, the camera moves forward. And it's pretty much as simple as it gets. It's a pre as almost as simple as uh, 2D video editing just in Premiere Pro or something. Where I'll go back to the beginning. So it's in this position. I'll actually go to the layout which I have a timeline here and a curve and the curves here show the change over the time length. As you can see there's it, this curve is the camera movement. So if I click space I've got a sinusoidal uh, changing between two points and that's as simple as it gets. You start with the point here so we can delete these keyframes. I start here click I location that's it's that's a set keyframe then so it starts off here, and to create the second keyframe, I just move the camera to where I want it to, up a bit, maybe forward a bit, a bit more, look right, reach out a bit, down to the left, and then click I at the end of the timeline, so I've moved it this to the end, click I again, and click location again. That creates the curve, as you can see on the left. It just creates a smooth curve, and default is a sinusoidal wave. It looks kind of like a sine curve with a slow start and a slow end, but a fast center. So with these, there are three of them actually for the X, Y, and Z. There are three position coordinates for it, which is X, Y, and Z. So each of them change a different amount, as you can see here. If I get all of these, and I can change the because it starts off sinusoidal, slow start and end, faster center. If I change the interpolation type to linear. See, it just goes to a linear line. Which if something is fast. I think sinusoidal works a bit better. If I was doing a longer scene, it would I would leave it linear because it creates that kind of slow start and just slow follow through that's constant. There are lots of others as well, so I can change it to circular. Very slow start and it just gets faster to the end, but very fast ending. Not right for the scene, I don't think. Bounce and stuff, it's some you can play with a lot of things, but so I just start with the basic uh, sinusoidal for this one. Oh, it's actually Bezier, so you can actually change it with curve sinusoidal. It's a bit different. I got that wrong. So you can change it with the Bezier curves, so they're all selected at once, so they all do the same thing. So yeah, that's the basics of this F curve view in the left here. You can change the speed between the two keyframes, and that's all I needed for the camera movement. That was probably the easiest part. One of the other parts of the animation was this flashing light, which is very important to the scene, obviously. So with this light, it's, I can't, it's not something I can show really. The change, but this curve is the same curve, but I zoomed out a bit to see because it goes from 800, as you can see on the materials over on the left, goes from between 800 and 15. And to create this, I just started with one keyframe at 800, that's where I want it to start. So with the light, I use the same F curve thing here, I've just zoomed out, but then I, as you can see. It's got these ups and downs, which I didn't create by hand. I could have done. It would have just taken some more time and probably wouldn't. We could have gotten it be the same, but probably not as realistic. So if, to do this, let's just start again. Let's delete the keyframes. Let's delete those. So I start with one of. I start with it. So I click I on the va strength value to start with one at 800. And then with this, I add a. Um, Modifier. So I go to these modifiers, add modifier, and a noise modifier. As you can see from this distance, it doesn't do anything. If I scale up the strength a lot, as I'm starting with 800, which is a very high brightness, you can see it gets very high. Spread it out the scale a bit to get more realistic. Obviously, this isn't exactly what I want. It goes up and down, above and below 500, 800 and 0, which isn't exactly what I want. So I add a limit. So on a maximum Y of 800. Minimum Y of I set about 15 because lights usually don't go completely dark, so there's a, still a bit of light. The scene's still visible even if it's at low light levels. And pull up the strength even more, where it becomes more of a digital instead of an analog scale. And 
yeah, as you can see, I can change the phase just so I move it along a bit. Changes a bit weirdly as I start in a weird place, but so it starts on the brightness I set there. Yeah, so and that's basically how I created the flickering lights. So yeah, if I go into rendered view, so from rendered view, I can, if I click play, camera moves in and the light flashes. It's kind of hard to see, but you can kind of see the pixels getting darker and brighter, darker and brighter. So there's a dark for scene. There's a light for scene. There's another dark, and then there's light just following the curves on the left. And that's it. Took me a while to figure out how to do these modifiers, and it, this was on to start with, so I couldn't see anything. It took me a while to get used to this new thing, which I hadn't experienced, and it's something that's useful to know for the future. Actually, before I did any of this, one thing I had to choose was how long I wanted the scene to be, and how fast I wanted it to be. And from my own knowledge of just animations and whatever. Anything below 24 frames per second look choppy. Anything above 15 is meant to be smooth to the eye, or actual animation-wise, but it's very visibly choppy to most people. So I went with 24, and I only did 72 frames, and I knew from just doing single frame renders of the scene, it would take a long time. It took 40, 45 minutes or to an hour per frame, and I knew I couldn't do a huge amount of rendering, it would have taken too long, which is a shame, I would have loved it to be longer, and as of making this video, you've likely seen the other video on, my, on this YouTube channel of the this scene with no materials, which I'll show later on in this video, and that was 300 frames at 30 frames a second, and it has such a better effect of eeriness and much more atmospheric, and that's something I wish I could have done with this, but it just took too long. Maybe in the future I'll remake the scene once I'm much better at Blender. It's very inefficient, that's why. It could be much better, much more inefficient. But I just can't do that at this point. So yeah, it's a shame, but that's why I did with the No Materials one, I'll show later. I was really happy with that, because it just pushes that effect so much better. That effect of eeriness and so much more atmospheric. So with some final additions I would like to add to this project, one thing I used for this is volumetric lighting, something I've talked about previously in some of my projects. It adds a fogginess, especially visible in the nighttime scene I did with the toy robot and the light cycle. Uh, I did a few of them in the light cycle, where it could add, makes it kind of darker, adds some blurriness to the lights, and it kind of adds that fogginess that I wanted from the scene. Volumetric lighting basically adds lots of particles into the air, which bounce the light off, so adding pretty much fog to your scene. However, as can be imagined, it increases the render time by quite a lot, as it just adds more particles and light bounces. Um, as you can see here, it's basically just a volume scatter, which changes the volume of the whole world into dust, pretty much, with a certain density, and it adds that fogginess. Another way to add that fogginess and glare is in this comp compositor, which allows you to, pretty much it works in, as a 2D video editor, a 2D image editor, like Photoshop. You can add nodes just like you do with, um, add nodes just like you do with the material editing. So if I go back to UV editing, if I go to objects, um, I choose an object, it's the same like this with all these nodes. It adds a node for, this view is just for the background. So if I uh, break this, it just you can't see it this but this composite is the actual output that you'll see on the final project with this you can add a glare node so if i add glare the glare filter and i did some fiddling with this and there are lots of different settings fog glow is probably the best closest what i want also, this background is a render I did a bit earlier on the low setting, just so it finished faster. Only 150 renders, uh, light rays, uh, just to speed this up. So I added fog. You know, fog glow works, and it adds that glare in, but it just wasn't exactly what I wanted. It did the job, but just not exactly what I wanted. There is one render on my website that shows you a render with the glare node. I think uh, maybe use streaks. But with this node in the compositor instead of volumetric lighting. Um, and it does work, but I need to I would need to fiddle around with it a lot more to get it how I wanted it. So I just stuck with volumetric lighting. 
Repository is also quite a useful thing. It's not something I've learned too well, but it also allows you to. Um, so if I were to, you can add like color balance, color balances. So add this old color correction thing. So if you need a bit more blue in the scene, a bit more blue, green, red, whatever, it just allows you to balance the scene. This colors the scenes color. Uh, which, is, which is kind of what you might need. You've done the render, you, you might just need a few more balancing things. I mean, I could also do that in Photoshop, but if this was a um, animation, I can. I would have to do it in Premiere Pro, which wouldn't be as easy. So yeah, it just it's just quite a useful tool to use for the final once you've completed the scene and just need to add those final touches. So yeah, talking about the rent, all that render time and how long this took. This has been a long project. Um, I would have to guess render time is probably 60 plus hours over multiple nights just leaving it on overnight because I can't leave it on during the day it makes my computer very slow when I use it for work and stuff uh, but with 72 frames it was about so yeah it was uh, between 45 minutes and an hour per frame so yeah that's it, it's way too long and plus the time it took me to produce this piece which uh, make all the objects in it was probably close to 30 hours in render time could have been 70 so it was almost 100 hours of work into the scene or 100 hours of my computer being on pretty much to make the scene and I mean making a scene I could do this a lot faster than 30 hours now I'm much better at Blender than I used to be I know much more which is it's very it was a good learning task this it, I learned a lot about Blender and I'll say do things quickly and easily take some shortcuts and whatnot. But so with this, I'd like to talk about earlier. I said the with no materials, and I created that because I wanted a longer animation. And on the, the first pit renders I did, you don't have any materials because you only made the objects. You just want to see what it looks like with lighting. And so I, as you can see those on my website, they. It's quite a strange, eerie effect, which is actually something I wanted. The flashing light, it it kind of creates that eeriness, and I wanted that realism, because that kind of creates that you being in that scene, the feeling of being in that scene, but removing the materials does that really well. It's, something, it's just not right, something's wrong, but it's still incredibly realistic. So I'll show you, this is the next Blender file, and this is what it looks like in the rendered view. It's incredibly realistic with lighting, but it's clean, incredibly clean, and everything's white. So with removing materials, I just kept the reflective materials, as I think that's what makes it pop, stand out and look the best. And to do this, I literally, all the materials are listed in these things. So if I go in on the sidebar, if I go to the previous image thing, and so if you go to the Blender files, go to Blender files in this um, outliner, all the materials are here, every single one that's in the scene. And I basically just went through and selected them and deleted them uh, to get this, which I just had to find the right ones which were needed. Um, so I needed this metal scratched on here, metal scratched. And you did metal scratched there. There was a glass here, which is a covering plate. I need a bit of glass up here, the light, uh, the glass on this, the washing machine glass and the washing machine metal rims. Metal scratched on the these and some glass back here as well. So yeah, it's just the same, exactly the same scene, but with this removing these materials because there's no displacement in the materials, no bumpiness and no extra reflectiveness like in the floor of the previous one. It was very reflective, um, and this adds a lot of light bounces that has to be calculated and increases it a hell of a lot, and uh, the render time by a hell of a lot. So with this, I could get the render time down to about three minutes per frame, which was incredibly short compared to the last one, which meant I could bump the frame, the whole animation time up to 300 seconds, 300 frames. At, I did do it for 60 FPS, but because I'm running it image by image, I save it as TIFF files and then put it together in a Premiere Pro. I used 30 in the final. About 300, that creates a 10 second animation, which is gives uh, pushes that feeling of uneasiness 
so much better than the last uh, three second animation. So yeah, I'm quite glad I did this and I was really happy with the result really. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of a, I think removing materials was quite a fun thing. It kind of, it's something I might do in the future because making the materials took, was one of the longest parts of the last, of creating a scene. Probably 10, 10 to 20 hours of just making the materials and finding the right ones, adjusting all of them. And it kind of, I could do a scene very quickly, make, just making the objects, if I just didn't make any materials, which kind of creates that something's not right effect very quickly. So it's something I might use in the future, but it's something I wanted to just add in this video. I did this after I created the last scene. But so yeah, I got the inspiration just from when I did my first renders. They had no materials, obviously, I didn't create any at that point, but they look really strange and something's off. But they're the lighting's incredibly realistic and the objects are realistic, so it fits very well together. I think that's all I've got to say about this. See you in the future probably with another project of mine. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.